Hi, my name is Dave Sollenberger. I'm the manager of the Dixon National Tallgrass Prairie Seed Bank at the Chicago Botanic Garden. I'm Esteval Martinez, and I'm a college first intern. We are here at McLaughlin Prairie in Lake Forest, Illinois, to demonstrate how to make a seed collection for the seed bank. Ready, Esteban? Let's go. There are certain things you must consider before making a standard seed collection. First, the population must be natural, not a planted habitat or restoration where seeds have been intentionally introduced. McLaughlin Meadow is a prairie remnant in a dedicated Illinois nature preserve. Seek permission to make a seed collection on your site using seed bank collecting protocols. This may be accomplished by approaching the owner of a private site or securing an official collecting permit from a public agency. In Illinois, collecting on a nature preserve requires a permit which has been approved by the owner of the site and the Illinois Nature Preserves Commission. We can help you apply for permits for your site if necessary. The species must be available or open for collection on the restoration target list which can be found on the seed bank website. Make sure the species you select is not listed as a threatened or endangered species in your area. If it is listed, do not make the collection. This list covers a broad area and even though a species on the list may be listed as threatened or endangered for your area, it may be common somewhere else in the region. Seeds from at least 50 individuals in a population, and preferably a lot more, need to be collected to capture the majority of the genetic diversity held within the population. If there are less than 50 plants in the population, the collection should not be made using standard protocols. A maternal line collection can be made if no other larger populations of the species can be found nearby. Contact seed bank staff if you are contemplating making a maternal line collection. Although 3,000 seeds are acceptable for a standard seed collection, 10,000 to 20,000 seeds are ideal for creating seeds in a seed bank. If a population has over 50 individuals but will not yield at least 3,000 seeds, an equal representation collection is recommended. This type of seed collection is often made for species with naturally low fertility or seed production. Now let's review what's included in the standard collection for the seed bank. First, a seed collection of 10,000 to 20,000 or at the very least 3,000 seeds. More than 20,000 seeds are acceptable. A complete field data sheet, both front and back sides. Explanations on how to fill out each section of the data sheet can be found in our website. Two label herbarium specimens, preferably in bloom, both specimens and fruit are acceptable. One green leaf sampled in a labeled envelope and placed in a sealed plastic bag with silica gel for future DNA analysis. Photographs of the plant and its fruit, in its habitat, and its seeds. The photos can be saved on a disc and sent with those of the other collections at the end of the season. The photos should be labeled according to the instructions on our website. Here are some essential items you will need to bring with you to make a field collection. Although not essential, a storage clipboard is highly recommended. It provides a hard surface variety and has a storage compartment for many other essential field items. Bring along any seed collecting permits issued to you. Often, it is required on the permit that they to be carried with you in the field. Be sure to include a stack of blank field data sheets and several pens and pencils. You may want to include a marker to mark your collection bags. You will need a navigation device to record the GPS coordinates of your location. Don't forget to bring along some DNA sample bags. A magnifying glass and a razor blade or sharp pocket knife will be useful to examine seed for ripeness. 
Bring along an assortment of paper bag sizes for collecting seeds. Cloth bags are preferable on rainy wet days. A large reclosable bag serves well to transport fresh or varying specimens to the plant press awaiting in your vehicle. Or if your collecting site is close to your vehicle, you may decide to transport the plant press directly into the field and press your bearing specimens immediately. Don't forget a camera and extra batteries. You may want to bring extra batteries for your navigation device as well. There are other items you may want to bring along to make your field experience more comfortable. Now that the necessary preparations have been made, we are ready to make a standard seed collection for the seed bank. The species we are collecting today is Trigoscanthia ohensis, otherwise known as Ohio spiderwort. It has beautiful blue flowers that mature over a span of about a month so the fruits can be in various stages of ripeness on the same plant. Here is Dave opening the fruits to check for seed ripeness. If the seeds are ripe, they will be firm, not mushy, when compressed. There will be evidence of a healthy embryo or endosperm when cut open. The presence of a light-colored, usually waxy substance filling in the interior of the seed. Checking for seed ripeness is a good time to calculate how many plants need to be sampled to acquire the 10,000 to 20,000 seeds required for a good collection. Most fruits contain about 5 seeds. Of the fruits in the head, about 8 are ripe. Each plant contains approximately 3 fruiting heads. If we remove one fruiting head per plant, that will equal a little more than 20% of the seeds from the same plant, and less than 20% for others. So if we calculate one head for each plant, and there are 8 ripe fruits with 5 seeds per fruit, then we could expect approximately 40 seeds for each plant. If we divide 10,000 by 40, then we need to collect one fruiting head off of approximately 250 plants to get our 10,000 seeds. It has been determined that the population is large enough for the collection, so Dave begins collecting randomly across the entire population. Sampling from the center and edges, making sure to count each plant as a single fruiting head is collected. It is important to collect both small fruiting heads and large heads, short plants and tall plants, large plants with lots of fruiting stems and small plants with few fruiting stems. To capture the genetic diversity of the population, try not to select just the biggest, most robust plants for the collection. An unbiased approach is best. Upon completion of the collection, the field data sheet must be filled out. The first value to be entered should be the number of plants that were sampled. Near the middle of the population, record the GPS coordinates with your navigation device. The western coordinate should always be recorded as a negative value. Record the Latin names of the associated species that are recognized near where the GPS coordinates were recorded. On the datasheet are checkboxes for photographs of the plant, its habitat, and its seeds. For a DNA sample, we collect a green leaf from a nearby spider and place it in the provided envelope with the appropriate data recorded on the envelope. Then place it in the attending reclosable plastic bag with silica gel. If not collected previously, two bearing specimens need to be extracted with a root piece if permitted. Dave will place them in a reclosable plastic bag to keep them fresh until he is able to transfer them into a plant press. The collection is nearly complete. Back at the vehicle, the seeds are stored out of direct sunlight and the plant press is open to accept the ovarian specimens. Each specimen is arranged separately between two pages of a newspaper to display its identifying features. Each 
each specimen is labeled on the outside edge of the newspaper with the plant name, collection date, and name of the collector. The seeds need to be dried before shipping and need to be stored in a cool, dry area until they are shipped. Fleshy fruits are perishable and should be shipped soon after the collection using FedEx Express for quick delivery to the seed rank. When shipping seeds to the seed bank, be sure to include your bearing specimens, usually pressed between two pieces of cardboard. Data sheets, DNA samples, and seeds. To ensure seeds remain in their paper bags during shipping, double bagging is a good idea and securing the bag so the binder clip works well. Your invoice can be included in the box, but we would rather have it emailed to us. On your contract that you signed to collect seeds for us is a FedEx account number that we would like you to use to ship your seed collections. If FedEx is not a convenience for you, you can use the U.S. Postal Service and include the shipping fee on your invoice. I hope our video was informative. If you still have any questions about making a standard seed collection for the seed bank, please contact us. Our contact information is on our website. Go to www.sciencecollections.org and click on the Seed Banks tab.